Hey guys, it's Vanessa. I wanted to wrap up some of the things that I've been reading lately, slash maybe do a little quick uh, library haul because I have a lot of books out from the library. For some reason, I came home with a lot of books this week and thinking I would read a lot because my boyfriend was gone. And it hasn't really happened, but it might. And a lot of them are kids' graphic novels too. So let's get started with the things that I have read. The first thing I read since the last time I updated was The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. This is my second Anthony Horowitz. I listened to it all on audiobook basically. I think in general I liked Magpie Murders more than this one and I think my main problem with this book was the two main characters. I did not care about them. They were not relatable. They were actually kind of annoying I think especially like the main detective. I didn't really see See that he had any redeeming qualities until way towards the end like in the last chapter and maybe it'll get better since this is to my knowledge going to be a series. I thought it was just like a good mystery but I just didn't think it had the charm that Magpie Murders had for me. Um, the next thing that I read and I loved was Matilda by Roald Dahl. I've never read any Roald Dahl before which is kind of weird and I listened to Matilda on audiobook. It is narrated by Kate Winslet which I totally suggest be the way that you listen to this or consume this. I thought it was just so enrapturing and I was completely charmed by Matilda and by Miss Honey and just by the narration how we got to meet all these characters and even the really horrible grown-up characters in this story. It was just fun because I grew up loving the movie, one of my childhood favorite movies, and seeing where that movie came from I think this book is very very true to the movie and I really really love that. After that I finally finished which took me more days than I it should have. Awkward by Svetlana Chamakova. And this is a middle grade graphic novel. It is so cute inside and that's really what initially attracted me to it. Just the colors and the, the style of drawings. So this is a really cute story about a girl who's part of the art club and a boy who's part of the science club and kind of their warring uh, clubs and how they don't like each other and how they're always playing pranks on each other. There ends up being a competition between the two clubs and they end up realizing with the help of the main character that it's better to work together than to basically compete against each other. I know that there's another one in this series. I'm not like running to start it just because I thought that this one um, started out really cute and funny and just kind of stayed there. I just thought that it concluded in a nice way but not anything that would make me want to read the next one right now. And then after that I read another graphic novel. This one is All Summer Long by Hope Larson. I feel like this one's been garnering a little bit of buzz and I know Hope Larson as the person who does the... I can think of her face. Goldie Vance. There you go. I forgot Goldie Vance's name. So she does the Goldie Vance comics and um, this one is just a standalone. It's about a summer when two friends are basically separated for the first time. She also takes up some hobbies and she's really into music and it just seemed like a very reserved, quiet, sort of this one summer style of book where it's not like lots of things were happening but I don't think that I connected to this one as much as this one summer. I did enjoy kind of how the character changed over time and her realizing that you know relationships are going to evolve and change but that you can still really care about your friends. I just think that it was very short. Another one that I read is another middle grade book. I've been trying to read some new Newbery winners and kind of some staple middle grade fiction so I could recommend them better. And this is one that when I was growing up was really, really popular. This is The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo. I love Kate DiCamillo's um, Mercy Watson series. I still haven't read her Bank and Golly series, but I thought I would read her Newbery Honor Winner. And this one is a standalone too, so she, it's not a series. And in this one, we follow Despero. It's kind of a book about a lot of philosophical things that I think are spelled out pretty well for kids or very black and white, especially depictions of evil. So I thought it was all right. I also think that I wish that it focused more on Despero and I think after like the first third are introduced to other characters which makes sense for where the story is going but I just felt like the whole point of the book was Despero and the whole draw to me of the book was Despero and his view of the world and how romantic his ideas are about the world. Um, I just wish we had more Despero. So I thought this one was good, but not great. 
One thing that was pretty good was The Epic Fail of Arturo Zamora by Pablo Cartaya. I listened to this one on audiobook and it's narrated by Pablo Cartaya. I really, really enjoyed this book because it was not your typical middle grade book. This one was a book about a boy basically fighting gentrification in his neighborhood in Miami. And I thought that was just such a different kind of take on a middle grade novel and I was really excited to read it. I thought about family a lot when I was reading this and just the Spanish that came through in the book and the cooking that came through in the book and just like the family dynamics and how they talk to each other, how they think through problems and how to solve them. It just reminded me a lot of my family and I really enjoyed that. Arturo I think is just a really sweet kind, courageous, funny, and awkward boy that I think little kids would find relatable. He takes on this developer pretty good. The villain, I will say, I really enjoyed reading from that perspective. It seemed kind of like, oh, he's just destroying the neighborhood, but honestly, there are developers who are destroying neighborhoods all across our country. I liked how Arturo stepped up and fought for his family's restaurant and for his neighborhood. So I would totally suggest that you read this. It's a pretty, pretty good middle grade novel. Let's talk about things that I want to read. I started Fair Coon by Sora Neale Hurston. I won't lie, I had a lot of troubles getting through like the first 25 pages. This book is very short and I think my problems were with all of the there were like three introductions basically. I've heard kind of some mixed things about the end too and I'm just, I don't know if my interest is all the way there even though this is a very short book and I can get through it. I was listening to it on audiobook and I liked it on audiobook because um, the dialect is performed by the narrator really well. This is one where I could give it another chance but I'm not 100% sure if this has my interest all the way. All Sphere in Middle School by Victoria Jameson, the person who did Roller Girl. I have not read this and I think I'm gonna like this. Um, and it's all about Renaissance jousting. They take part in the Renaissance Fair. So that's another graphic novel I wanna get to. The Prince and the Dressmaker. This is a graphic novel that I'm very excited about. The art is so beautiful. I love it. I have no idea what this is about. I saw it on Maria's channel. And she said she really enjoyed this. My Brother's Husband. This is a book that I feel a lot of people really, really enjoy. That I've seen here on booktube. I haven't read it yet. And I think it's time for me. I've read 56 pages. And for me, I think I will always think manga is a little bit... Like the faces drawn are a little bit over dramatic for me. Like these kinds of faces. <laughs> um, but I think I just have to get used to the style. So yeah gotta read that. That is it. Thanks for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.